The film begins with Kate and Matt, a charming couple. They are married but do not have a baby because Kate has already miscarried twice and now she doesn't want to try again. They have just bought a new but small, scary house in a desolate part of upstate New York where their house is the only one surrounded by woods. Kate and Matt are ecstatic as they have finally purchased their own property. They begin renovating it, and while doing so, Matt discovers a hidden door that is locked and for which they do not have a key. However, while doing house chores, Kate discovers the key and opens the door. As soon as they open the door, the lights start blinking and eventually go dark, much like in a horror movie. Upon seeing this, they both become frightened and opt not to go into the hidden room. The following day, Matt brings a technician, and they both enter the room, where they are astounded to see nothing but clusters of wires all over the wall. Upon seeing so many wires, the technician is baffled. In addition, they discover a wheel-like structure in the center of the wall with three mini lights twinkling on it. The electrician admits his cluelessness and apologizes for being unable to assist them. When the technician is leaving the house, he informs Matt that a murder case occurred in this residence many years ago. He advises Matt to resell the house and move out as soon as possible because it may be haunted, but Matt disregards his recommendation and decides to keep it hidden from Kate. Although he has no plans to leave this house, he is concerned by the technician's statements and conducts a Google search for the murder incident. From there, he learns that in 1975, a couple living there were shot dead by their own son, John, for a mysterious reason, and the murderer was then admitted to a mental asylum. This has deeply disturbed Matt, but he consoles himself by believing that the boy murdered his parents because they were torturing him and that the house is not haunted in any way. With a wine bottle and a table lamp, Matt enters that room in the evening to start work. He can't get his mind off the fact that he's keeping something from his wife. After finishing his work, he sits by a wall with an empty wine bottle and muses over how nice it might be to have another bottle. Following this, the lamp starts to flicker and eventually turns off. He finds it horrifying. However, when the lamp is turned back on, he is flummoxed to see a new wine bottle in front of him. He is unable to believe that it is real. The scene cuts here and shifts to the following morning, when Kate enters that room in search of Matt and is astonished to find it filled with expensive items. She can't believe her eyes and questions Matt about where they came from. The moment he sees Kate, he rushes over to her and exclaims with joy that she can make any wish come true in this magical room. She doesn't believe him, so he convinces her to make a wish. She wishes for a new job, but Matt informs her that she should just wish for something physical that the room can provide them with. Kate is still dubious of Matt and wishes for money. The light flashes as usual, and when it turns back on, there is a lot of cash on the floor, perplexing Kate. Kate bursts out laughing as she realizes they can now have everything they've always desired. Every day, they start making many wishes come true from this mystical room. Matt learns from an article that John, who murdered his parents in this house, is still alive in a mental facility. He becomes concerned that John may return to reclaim his home, but he keeps this information hidden from Kate. He is overjoyed to see her so happy after miscarrying twice. They both wished for a lot of money from the room, and now they have so much cash that they have built a cash wall. One day, Matt tells Kate that since they are now fabulously rich and have access to all of life's pleasures, they are in a good position to have a child. Hearing this, she becomes depressed and declares that she will never consider having a baby again because all her pains have been futile the past two times, and she is not willing to do so again. Matt makes every effort to persuade her, but she refuses. However, when Matt is not at home, she enters the magical room and wishes for a child. The very next moment, she receives an infant baby boy from the room. When Matt gets home and sees the baby, he begins to yell at her, warning that doing so is against nature and could have fatal consequences. However, because Kate is so desperate for a child, she disregards his rage and keeps the child, claiming that it was her greatest wish ever. Now that things are out of his hands, Matt decides to pay a visit to John and inquire about the reality of this magical room. When Matt meets John and asks him why he killed his parents, he does not respond and instead warns Matt to leave the house as soon as possible. Matt returns home from the mental institution, puzzled as to why John warned him to abandon that house. On his way home, he stops at a gas station to refuel his car. When he takes out his cash to pay for gas, he is bewildered to find nothing but sand in his pocket. He returns home in awe and throws the cash out the window, which turns to sand in no time. Matt realizes that whatever the room grants them is only useful within the house and useless elsewhere. In a fit of rage, he begins breaking down the room's walls to see the hidden reality behind them, but all he finds are wires. He is perplexed as to what he should do. Here, the baby boy, now named Shane, begins to cry, which irritates Matt. Kate decides to take him out for some fresh air. Although Matt knows what will happen to Shane when he is exposed outside, he does not notify Kate, and she departs from the house. 
Shane starts screaming and crying a lot right after Kate leaves the house. However, Matt closes the door, realizing that now is the best time to get rid of this baby. After a short while, the boy's sobbing stops, and Matt realizes the boy must have passed away. Although, when Matt opens the door for Kate, he is shocked to see Shane transformed into a seven-year-old boy. Kate is taken aback by what has just occurred, but Matt realizes that if they wish for a living thing and take it out of the house, it will age quickly and die in minutes. Kate ignores Matt and spends the entire day with Shane, treating him like her own baby. This makes Matt envious of Shane, and he is always looking for a way to get rid of him. Although Kate has warned Shane not to leave the house, one day he opens the gate and extends his hand, but Kate arrives and pushes him back. She scolds him for disobeying her and tells him that if he sneaks outside, he will die because of a virus. One night, while Kate and Matt are sleeping, Shane enters the mystical room. After wandering around for a while, he realizes that it is not a normal room and that it can grant his wishes. From there, the scene cuts to Matt and Kate searching for Shane. When they walk into the room, they discover that Shane has turned it into an outdoor space where he is playing with a snowman and enjoying himself. Kate is delighted to see him playing and joins in. However, Matt becomes irate with him for coming in there without informing them, and he drags him back to his room. Kate and Matt begin to argue about Shane's actions. Meanwhile, Matt receives a phone call from John, who informs him that the couple who lived in this house in 1975 wished for a baby from the magical room, and he is that baby. He goes on to say that the room told him that if he wanted to go outside, he had to kill the person who wished him, which is why he killed his parents. When Matt hears this, he becomes extremely concerned about Kate. Kate has also heard all of his conversations with John on the other linked cell phone and is terrified about what she should do now. She realizes she has made a huge mistake and leaves the house in her car for a long drive to make herself feel better. Shane, on the other hand, is waiting for Kate, unaware that he is a terror to her. When Matt notices him waiting for Kate, he becomes enraged and informs him that he is not their child and that they have just wished him from the room. He adds that he will die if he goes outside the house. Given that he is a threat to Kate, Matt drags him out of the house to protect his wife, but just as he is about to do so, he decides to have mercy on Shane and carries him back to his room. Matt reads a bedtime story to Shane and then falls asleep next to him. When Kate returns home, she is overjoyed to see Matt and Shane together, realizing that Matt has admitted him as their son. Matt also awakens upon realizing Kate has returned home. She hugs Matt before welcoming him into their room, where they soon begin romancing. Meanwhile, Shane peeks into the room through the door, and upon seeing her parents having intercourse, his manly desires for his mother begin to arouse. Since that day, Shane's feelings for his mother have changed, and he now views her as his woman. One day, completely aware that he will reach adulthood, Shane steps outside the house, and when he comes back inside, he has transformed into a late teenage, muscular boy. Kate and Matt yell at him for what he did, but before they say anything else, Shane points a gun at Matt, and they begin to argue. During the fight, Kate is struck by something and swoons. When she reopens her eyes, Matt is in front of her, telling her that he had killed Shane. Kate is deeply saddened by it, but Matt consoles her by explaining that he did it to save their lives. During lunch, Kate, who is completely exhausted, requests that they leave this house and shift somewhere else. Matt tells her that he doesn't want to leave because they can have whatever they want in this house. Kate is suspicious that he is not Matt because he has always attempted to convince her to leave this house. Moreover, Matt begins pressuring Kate into having intercourse with him. Since Matt never forced her to have sex with him, she is confident that he is not Matt but Shane, who has transformed himself into Matt by wishing through the room. She runs away from him, but due to weakness, she collapses to the ground and swoons. With a menacing grin on his face, the fake Matt or Shane approaches her, thinking he will get what he wants. Here, the real Matt regains consciousness and begins desperately searching the house for Kate but finds no one. He notices that all the doors, including the door to the magical room, are closed and realizes Shane has done this. He manages to break through a wall and exit the house, where he notices the same house in front of him. Shane built a replica of this house and kept Kate inside. The real Matt walks into that house and finds his lookalike flirting with Kate. They both begin to argue, leaving Kate puzzled as to who the real Matt is. She addresses Shane by name, to which he responds, and she realizes he is Shane. She pushes him, and he falls down the stairs. They both begin desperately looking for a way out of the house, only to discover that Shane has locked all the doors. They eventually make it out of the house and into the woods, followed by Shane. When they notice Shane outside chasing them, they realize they are still inside the house, which is why Shane isn't dying. After a long run, Kate and Matt arrive at their real house, where Shane is already waiting to kill them. 
He attacks Matt, but Matt deflects his blow and pushes him out of the house, and Kate immediately shuts the door. He starts screaming in pain, gets older quickly, and dies in minutes. Kate feels sorry for him because he was supposed to be her baby. They finally get rid of him and are free to leave the house, which they do, indicating the end of the movie. I hope you all enjoyed the recap. If so, then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll see you in my next video.